Hi, a couple weeks ago we did a YouTube video on the very basics of model rocketry. Rocketry 101, if you will. Well, winter is just about past. The grass is starting to come out, and soon it will be time to fly model rockets outdoors. With that in mind, I'd like to do another video about model rockets, but share a couple of tips and tricks that I've learned over the years from doing them. The first one is a tip, and this one for me was a game changer. To many people it may seem a very obvious thing, but if it doesn't, I think I can hopefully save you a lot of grief with misfires. Now the Estes model rocket engine, as you know, has the powder charge, which has a hole in it. You insert the ignitor, which is a little bit of flammable material on a nichrome wire, so when you hit your start button you're causing a heated short it flares up instantly just for a brief second like a match right and this catches onto the solid fuel igniting the rocket and sending it in the air now we found in, in the early days when we were rookies that there was a quite a lot of instances of fails you'd hit the button you'd see it go or something the igniter would fall out of the rocket or whatnot and uh, it didn't fire so we learned an easy trick for doing this so using my illustration here, if you will, take this to be the model uh, rocket. There's the end, there's the hole. Now, the model, the tip of the igniter has a small surface area. We found when we shoved it into the hole, we found that only the tip of the end was hitting the end of the hole the receptacle for it. So if that didn't ignite that little surface area, we had a misfire. Now we found if we took our model uh, rocket igniter, bent it 90 degrees before we insert it into the rocket, push it in to the aperture, pull it tight to the side, and then put the plug in and bend with that much surface area hitting the engine, we almost have a, a correct fire every single time. We almost have no misfires. As I say, maybe a lot of you people already know this. For us, it was a game changer. and saved us a lot of misfires. Okay, the second tip I would like to give you is baby powder. Baby powder, I buy mine at the dollar store. Don't steal your mom's good stuff or the baby's stash. You probably get in trouble for that. So what we have here is something that acts as a dry lubricant. So you take your model parachute, give it a little, little dab of baby powder, swoosh it around with your hands. That makes it slippy. It's like a dry lubricant. So when we shove this thing back in here, it's going to come sliding out much easier. And it doesn't even hurt to get some on the engine itself. Now another little trick you can do is pour a little of the baby powder into the rocket itself. This will result, when it comes out at the top, you'll get a puff of smoke, as you can sort of see here. Making it easier to spot when it's at a high altitude. Now again, with the baby powder, we used to take our launch deflector pad, we take our baby powder and we put liberal amounts of it on the base. So, when the rocket ignites and takes off, the blast piles off the powder and makes a big plume of smoke, like a lift off at Cape Canaveral. At the end of the session, you will find on your field or your baseball diamond or wherever you're firing from, you'll find a circle, a perfect circle, around your launch area where the powder has settled from the smoke when you take off. Now, how about a couple of tricks? You know, you watch the rockets go up, you watch the rockets go down. They're a lot of fun, but soon it gets tedious. It's just up and down, up and down. What we used to do at some of our exhibitions, little parachute man. You know, those little toys you had with the little parachutes. You throw them up in the air and down they come. So, we take our little parachute man. We load them up into our rocket. So, of course, first it's your your uh, recovery wadding and your parachute and whatnot. Well, you can squirt this guy in if you have the room. And when he comes out, he flies down independently 
of the rocket, and the kids can chase after. It makes for a little fun. When we used to do exhibitions for community groups and whatnot, um, we used to take our big size rockets like this guy. Oh, we taped the lid on. I guess he was having trouble coming off. So imagine this thing with the lid off. If your rocket's big enough, in our case, it was the one this size, we put business cards in there. So we went and we put them on public displays of fireworks events and stuff. So we had our business cards. Again, recovery wadding first, recovery medium, parachute, whatnot. Then with the room left over, we put some business cards in there. And when the thing ejected, the business cards came wafting out and the kids picked them up and there was a little bit of advertising. Now, if you were doing a charity flight or a fun event or a barbecue or something like that, you could put a little coupon in it for like a free balloon or something cool. And the kids would have to find these things wherever they land and bring them in and redeem them or for a discount or whatever you want to do with your event and whatnot. Again, with the uh, glitz and glamour, as it were, I told you you could put your baby powder inside the rocket to make a plume of smoke. If you're on a really good sunny day and you happen to have some craft glitter around, we used to take this stuff and pour a bit of that inside. Again, when it goes on a bright sunny day, you get all this, you know, fairy sparkle in the sunlight. You know, just wafting it. It looks really cool. And it helps you spot your rocket in the air. The last tip I have for now, this was given to me by somebody who flies a lot of model rockets. If you can handle the touch and feel of, of, of fiberglass uh, house insulation, this stuff is not flammable, so it can be used in a pinch as recovery wadding. You put that inside before you put your chute and everything in, and will act just the same as your recovery wadding, except this will pop out and it will waft to the ground. You can recover it and keep using it over and over. So whether you use it all the time or whether you're not keen to the idea of touching it or whatever, just keep a little bit in your toolbox. And if you find your other recovery wadding for some reason, you've got a backup. So those are my tips and tricks for today. If you have some that you would like to share with us, please put them in the comment section. And I look forward to seeing you all rocketing this spring. Thanks for watching.